Well, we want to talk today about Nick DeFermian, um, Grandmaster, born on this day, 1957, three-time United States chess champion. Uh, he won it in 1987, 1995, and 1998. The next game was also played at the Manila Interzonal Tournament, 1990. This was on July 5th of that year. Nick with the black pieces against the great Anthony Miles, died young, diabetic. Don't gather it was managed all that well. D4 by Tony. Knight F6. C4, E6, Knight C3, Bishop B4. This is the Nimzo Indian defense. Named for none other than Aron Nimzovich. Queen C2 is the classical variation in C5, the Berlin variation. Berlin has a lot of variations and a lot of different openings. Very popular venue for chess back in the day. So D takes C5, knight to A6. A3, bishop takes knight. Queen takes bishop. All right, so knight takes uh, C5, and then Tony Miles with F3. Can you imagine F3? Now, I know what you're saying. Don't play F3. Well, let's talk about this move. First of all, Black's dark squared bishop is no longer on the board. So this weakness is not as egregious as it might otherwise be if there were a dark squared bishop on the board. Uh, the idea, I'm sure, is to push into the center. Um, the book move, just so you know, is b4. And then the knight goes to e4, attacking the queen. Queen goes to d4, then d5 and c5. That's in the ECO, volume E, section number 38. F3, quite an interesting move here. Uh, but it's certainly not unprecedented. It's the second most commonly played move. Um, so there's got to be something to it. Yeah, this is a lot like a Yugoslav type of move. Um, F3. D5. Uh, A5 is played just as frequently, maybe a smidge more frequently. But D5 says, okay, are you really going to push to E4? I don't think so. So C takes D5. Bs? Excuse me. B6 is an interesting and somewhat surprising move. Didn't realize this could be played. B4 hits the knight. Knight to A4 hits the queen. Queen to B3 hits the knight. Pawn to B5 protects the knight. Now pawn to E4. You doubted me. Don't doubt me. A6, so the position is equal here. Knight to E2. Uh, Bishop D3 is a sensible and frequent alternative, but really the bishop doesn't have any more scope here than it does here in this line. So moving the knight right away, perfectly acceptable. Kingside castles. Bishop to g5, pinning the knight to the queen. h6, interrogating that bishop. 
Bishop h4, maintaining the pin. Pawn takes the pawn on d5 and pawn to e5. Attack the pinned piece. Though that is true, I think my preference would be rook d1. But he's attacking the pinned piece here. Really interesting uh, game that we have going on here. Here's a knight that can't move. It's going to be captured, right? Oh, wait, not so fast. Not so fast. Well, I think he should try this anyway, right? Take it anyway. I mean, it moves into a pin. And a pin. <laughs> two pins. But why not grab the knight? Don't see a, a reason. Suppose, uh, yeah, I don't even know what you'd play here for black, though. That's the problem. Is is where? What does black do now? A d4. Um. Yeah, maybe d4. Or develop your bishop now. All right, so he went rook e8, pawn to f4, instead of taking the knight. Pawn to g5 now. Very weird looking position. He has broken the pin. He's got this threat. He's got this threat. This is really a headache. Bishop to f4. He played knight to e4. And of course, g takes f4 is really strong if he in this position. But what about knight to um, g4? It's the same thing, it's just different. And in this situation, he's also eyeballing this pawn with another pair of eyes. I mean, he probably wouldn't want to take this anyway. Maybe he's planning on putting his knights in tandem at some point. I don't know. Bishop d4. Bishop e6. Queen to f3. Rook to c8, grabbing the open file. Pawn to f5. Only safe square, but it would be interesting. Taking it would be interesting. A, a sacrifice, and we've seen Nick make these kinds of minor piece sacrifices because um, here I can play... can play rook c4. And um, if he defends with rook d1, I'll just start piling some pieces up here. Ready to sack a rook here, too. So, for example, let's say queen f3, rook takes bishop. And um, and now I can grab this pawn, and I'm battering along this line where the king is out in the open. So that actually, though, I mean, I really am like really compensated. These guys aren't moving. I feel like I've got compensation. All right, it'd be interesting. Maybe foolhardy, though. Bishop d7. Knight to g3. By the way, this position is not unique until here. Move 22, the first unique move in the game. This game was um, copied to this point two years after the fact, in 1992, at the Bavarian Chess Championship. And um, 
H4 was the improvement found by the German Fide Master Günther Wachinger. His opponent was Fide Master Gerald Löw, also of Germany. I think that a rook, uh, rook to D1, another alternate that also um, keeps a, a small advantage. Knight to G3 allows rook takes pawn. Of course, um, if he takes, he didn't take, he played bishop e2. If he takes queen e8, and the bishop cannot move without allowing a nasty discovered attack. So let's say, for example, um, bishop f6. Well, got knight takes knight check. And when the king moves, b1, it's the rookie. I eat it like a cookie. So, um, he didn't take it. He played bishop e2. Uh, by the way, bishop to um, d3 is wrong for the same reason. You get the check and after takes, takes. He played bishop e2, obstructing the e file. Queen e8, and now rook to c2 would pack a winning punch. He played knight to h5, still not interested in picking this up, interestingly enough. Doesn't really have any good moves already. The rook takes the pawn on f5, oh my goodness. Queen e3, rook to c3. This is really driving me crazy. So many things going on here. He did take it that time, but this knight can now jump in there, so it's a, an exchange sacrifice. You don't want to capture with this knight because queen takes, queen check, bishop takes, queen, bishop d3 hits the rook, and rook can give check, king d2, knight can give check, bishop takes, Pawn takes, but even though he's got this past pawn, um, white has equalized. He's got two rooks and a knight against a rook and two minors. Black does have the extra two pawns. So you're basically equal. You're going to bring one of your rooks to c1. And, uh, yeah. So you got to take with the knight on a4, bishop g4. I don't know if um, pawn to g4 would be a more hopeful try. Because he'll just come over here. And, well, at least you can castle, but things still look Pretty precarious for white, to say the least. I mean, again, you can play knight g3. And, you know, yeah, the queen can take to get out of that danger, but hey, you're being forked. So have fun losing your queen. Two knights. <laughs> All right. So bishop g4, d4 hits the queen, queen takes the pawn, knight to c5, discovered check. Everything's hanging. This is hanging, this is hanging, this is hanging. But he's in check and can't take any one of them. It reminds me of 
an interview with Mikhail Tal, another very tactical player, when he was asked, how can you leave so many pieces hanging? He says, well, you can only capture one at a time. King d2, knight b3, check. Wow. Wow. There you go. King takes knight. Knight takes queen. Bishop takes rook. Queen e3 didn't even bother taking this bishop. And, um... Well, there are two pieces you can take it with, but don't forget you're being forked here too if you're not careful. So no, you can't. You cannot do it. And knight e2 check. Well, he plays king d2, and this threat is still here. So you've got to be very careful. Queen e3 check keeps the initiative. Bishop to d3. Bishop to f5. Back the pinned piece. Queen's rook to d1 defends. Knight e2 check. Still exploiting the pin. King c2. Queen to e5. This is a pen, so the bishop cannot take. He's coming to c3 with check. That would be fatal, so he plays king to d2. Queen to b2 check. Real quick, let's make the nothing move, just so you can see how this is a forced checkmate. Um, because here, then I've got check, king comes here, only legal move, then knight c3, I'm mating him here, I don't think you can stop this, you can stall with a check of your own, I'm gonna get out of check, okay, you can come here though, but I'll give this check, and now this is the only legal move, and mate. So you got to be um, careful there. He played king d2 to, to avoid that. But now queen b2 check. King e3. Bishop g4. Um, and then he gave a self mate. Oh, oh, checkmate right there. Uh, and it's inevitable. I mean, to delay the inevitable, I think you can can play rook h to e1 still playing queen d4 check he'll play king to d2 i just grab his i think i'll grab his knight i just grab his knight and yeah i mean this is clearly in Black's hands. But, gave a helpmate with Rook to D2, cutting his king out. Boom. Nice checkmate. Crossfire checkmate. That's yeah, so sweet. Ending the... Really nice checkmate. That That was my favorite one. Really strong game. I, uh, the numbers White had 96.73 accuracy with 56.8% best moves. Black's accuracy was 98.89 with 67.8% best moves.